Hello and welcome to this special report. I'm Mark Tucson. For the next half an hour, we're going to take you into the eye of the storm, the most destructive and one of the most dangerous elements that a thunderstorm can produce, tornadoes. Tornadoes, they are one of the most dangerous and destructive elements Mother Nature throws at us, with funnels ranging from an average as small as 100 meters all the way to the monster destructive animals that are 600 meters wide and kill an average of 100 people each year, though over 100 may die in a single day. Tornadoes occur in many parts of the world, but no country experiences more tornadoes than the United States, which averages more than 1,000 annually and experienced a record 1,424 tornadoes during 1998. Although tornadoes have occurred in every state, including Alaska and Hawaii, the greatest number occur in the tornado belt or tornado alley of the Central Plains, which stretches from central Texas to Nebraska. Many of the tornadoes that form along the Gulf Coast are generated by thunderstorms embedded within the circulation of hurricanes. Before we can understand how a tornado is made and what makes up its life cycle, we must know where they come from. Thunderstorms can happen nearly anywhere in the world. The greatest frequency in the tropical rainforest areas where they may occur nearly daily. In temperate regions, they are most frequent in spring and summer, though can occur in cold fronts at any time of the year. Probably the most thundery region outside the tropics is Florida. During the summer, violent thunderstorms are an almost daily occurrence over central and southern parts of the state. The most powerful and dangerous severe thunderstorms also occur over the USA, particularly in the Midwest and over the southern states. These storms can and often produce very large hail and powerful tornadoes. A tornado is defined as a violently spinning column of air in contact with both a cumuliform cloud base and the surface of the earth. A tornado is typically shaped like a funnel with the narrow end on the ground. The strong winds of a tornado can destroy buildings, uproot trees, and hurl all sorts of lethal missiles into the air. People, animals, and home appliances all have been picked up, carried several miles, then deposited. Tornadoes have accomplished some of the most astonishing feats, like lifting a railroad coach with its 117 passengers and dumping it in a ditch 25 meters away. Other oddities include chickens losing all their feathers and pieces of straw being driven into metal pipes. Miraculous events have occurred too. In one instance, a schoolhouse was demolished and the 85 students inside were carried over 100 meters without one of them being killed. Meteorologists with the National Weather Service survey damage after a storm event occurs. You may ask, why would they do this? Doesn't the Doppler radar provide accurate enough information? The answer is yes and no. Yes, because the Doppler radar is a very reliable and trusted tool for meteorologists, but in order to characterize what the storm damage actually was, requires a pair of eyes on scene to determine if it was a straight line winds event or a tornado that caused the damage. And if so, what scale on the Fujita scale the tornado was that hit the area. When tornadoes return to the Fujita scale, what is it and what does it stand for? Plus, a deeper look into the history of storm chasing when we return on Tornadoes. I'm Swindle You from Millennium Quality Cars and we are in the middle of our school's already started sale. Down here at Millennium Quality Cars, we have an obligation to sell you the cheapest car in town. You can tell by my Canadian tuxedo that we are so crazy, cars are practically driving themselves right off the lot. Check out this beauty. It's brand new to the lot with brand new tires for only $75. Buy this Ranger XLT and you get this Cutlass Sierra for free. An awesome deal for only $3,200. We've got deals all across the lot. 0.9 financing and $0 down with approved credit, you can't lose. So stop down and see our working cars in our super selection for Millennium Quality Cars, right here in Grand Forks on Columbia. Hang on the Canadian Tuxedo! Go! 
Hey, Doc and Orange here. Let's go for a ride. I want to show you something. See that coming up? It's a construction site. See my buddies out there? Listen to what they're saying. Slow down! Slow down! Slow down! Hey, you in the Buick. Where's the brake pedal, buddy? Oh, that's a big truck. Oh! Slow down! Hey, the orange says slow down. Welcome back to this Dakota Storm Team weather special, Tornadoes. I'm Mark Tucson. Each year, tornadoes kill an average of 100 people in the U.S. alone. Scientists have been working for years on ways to predict where tornadoes are, may form and accurately while increasing the lead time to alert the public of the possible dangers. Dr. Theodore Fujita of the University of Chicago led the way in tornado photo analysis. Dr. Fujita is the inventor of the Fujita scale of tornado wind damage, the standard for all tornado research. The Fujita scale, or F scale, rates a tornado's intensity by the damage it inflicts on human-built structures and sometimes on vegetation. A tornado will be assigned the rating of the most severe damage to any well-built home or a comparable level of damage from an engineering analysis of other damage. The Fujita scale ratings are issued after a tornado has passed through an area, not while it's on the ground. Back through history, this is one of the original animations that Dr. Fujita analyzed on the Fargo tornado. He actually determined the storm was actually made up of four separate tornadoes which developed one after the other on almost overlapping paths. 1973 brought a defining moment in tornado research history. The Union City, Oklahoma tornado was the first successful official scientific tornado chase. It was an ideal creation of conditions within the range of the radar station at NSSL, the National Severe Storms Lab, with cameras in two positions filming simultaneously. Joe Golden of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, who was on the chase and behind the camera at Union City, had this to say, looking back at the event and early tornado chasing. Well, we, we've known all along, of course, that tornadoes are among the most dangerous and deadly weather phenomena on the Earth. They're very dangerous. We, we knew or we heard that there were a few individuals out there chasing in the late 1960s. It turns out that it was really uh, not until the early 1970s that we had the atmospheric tools to do a good job of storm chasing, to do it successfully and safely. You needed somebody interpreting the radar in real time for you and good radio communications. Union City was the one case that still stands out in the sense that for the first time we had well-equipped chase teams that managed to intercept the storm before the tornado formed. And with the radio communications back to the Severe Storms Laboratory Research Doppler radar, which was only 26 miles away, that coupled with the detailed photographic record of the tornado, we were able to synthesize a fairly complete three-dimensional life history, if you will, of a complete tornado life cycle for the first time. The official Fujita scale category is determined after meteorologists and engineers examine damage, ground swirl patterns, radar tracking, eyewitness testimonies, media reports, and damage imagery, and sometimes photogrammetric and videogrammetric objects are taken into account, which is the measurement technology in which a three-dimensional coordinates of points on an object are determined by measurements made in two or more photographic images taken from different positions. Our understanding of tornadoes exploded in the 1970s through photogrammetry, ground damage pattern surveys, and the development of the Doppler radar. Dr. Fujita's F-scale standardized wind damage measurements for all researchers. Amateur tornado photography multiplied as scientists from the National Severe Storms Laboratory armed themselves with motion picture cameras as proven research tools. This helped researchers determine the wind speeds of tornadoes. Professor Fujita theorized that tornadoes often had multiple suction vortices surrounding the main circulation. The 1974 films proved his theory and proved that the multiple vortices do most of the tornado's damage. 
Those studies also showed Fujita that only about 10% of the tornado has winds over 200 miles per hour. The Union City footage helped define what we now know as the life cycle of tornadoes. This also led to the discovery of the mesocyclone and the tornado vortex signature, which makes Doppler radar such a great tool for tornado warnings. Matt Crowther, the senior meteorologist for the Weather Channel in 1996, explains the differences between Doppler radar and the NEXRAD or Next Generation Radar. Well, Doppler radar is different from the radar we've had for the past uh, 30 years or so, like you're used to seeing on the Weather Channel. That just indicates where the precipitation is and how intense it is. But a Doppler radar tells you the wind speed and whether the precipitation echoes are moving quickly toward the radar or away from the radar. And we have a very good example over here. That's the Red Rock tornado of April 26, 1991. The green here up in the legend indicates very strong winds blowing right toward the radar site and then you have very strong winds with the red blowing away and right in the middle right here where these colors come together is where we have the tornado vortex signature as indicated by the computer major tornadoes usually evolve through a series of stages the first stage is called the dust whirl stage where dust swirling upward from the surface marks the tornado's circulation on the ground and a short funnel often extends downward from the thunderstorm's base Damage during this stage is normally light. The next stage, called the organizing stage, finds the tornado increasing in intensity with an overall downward extent of the funnel. During the tornado's mature stage, damage is normally the most severe as the funnel reaches its greatest width and is almost vertical. The shrinking stage is characterized by an overall decrease in the funnel's width and an increase in the funnel's tilt and a narrowing of the damaged swath at the surface, although the tornado may still be capable of intense and sometimes violent damage. The final stage, the decaying stage, usually finds the tornado stretched into the shape of a rope. Normally, the tornado becomes greatly contorted before it finally dissipates. Although these are the typical stages of a major tornado, minor tornadoes may evolve only through the organizing stage. Some even skip the mature stage and go directly into the decaying stage. However, when a tornado reaches its mature stage, its circulation usually stays in contact with the ground until it dissipates. When tornadoes returns, a new phase of research begins in the 1990s and storm chasing fever hits the nation like nothing before when we return on Tornadoes. Hey, camera guy, over here. Yeah, that's right. I'm a talking orange. Yeah, it's weird, but go with it. Us oranges talk a lot. Like in the morning at breakfast, we're all about get up and go, 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 and let's get to work on time for a change. In the orange bowl, hey, we're talking first and ten, and let's hustle! But when you see us on the highway, we're only saying one thing. Slow down. We're all over construction zones, and that's all we're saying. So don't wind up pulp in a crash. You see me? You slow down. Listen to the orange. Hey, the orange says slow down. What are you getting so pepped up for? Big senior thesis. 20 pages, due in 14 hours, 30 minutes, and 23 seconds. Jeez. How about you? Uh, I got a couple paragraph uh, paper due on, you know, why you should take your clothes home to your parents, let them wash them instead of uh, you doing it in the dorms, you know, for my uh, intro to university living class. Sugar? Come visit Tabula Coffee House to satisfy all of your finals week preparation needs. Tabula Coffee House, the place to fuel her up. Stop in today and mention this ad and receive half off a double tall mocha. Tabula Coffee House, the place to fuel her up. Team Weather Special, I'm Mark Tucson. As home video cameras became less expensive and easier to carry, people started using their cameras to capture storms. These destructive beauties are almost more than an amateur videographer can resist. You know it's dangerous, you know it can kill. The view is so mesmerizing that you just can't refuse. 
April 26, 1991, Wichita, Kansas. This home video shows the destructive nature of tornadoes and the human nature to want to view what is happening. The inability to turn away and retreat to the relative safety within a structure. This day, atmospheric conditions were just right to form rotating thunderstorms which produced tornadoes throughout the Andover area. The Weather Channel was so confident that severe storms would happen within a 100 mile radius of Wichita that they sent one of their own video crews to Wichita 24 hours before the storm even hit to be ready to capture any severe weather that would pop up in the area. Little did they know that they placed their crew right where a major tornado would touch down. This video of the same tornado shot by meteorologist and storm chaser John Davies shows not only how quickly tornadoes move, but at the same time, how amazingly destructive they are. It also proves that large cities are not invulnerable to these monsters. 17 people lost their lives in and around Wichita due to this tornado. Though 17 people sorrowfully lost their lives this day, the death toll could have been much higher if not for the warnings issued to the public hours before to be prepared for this type of weather and the warnings put out right before the storm hit the city. When tornadoes are likely to form within the next few hours, a tornado watch is issued by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma to alert the public that tornadoes may develop within a specific area during a certain time period. Many communities have trained volunteer spotters who look for tornadoes after the watch is issued. Once a tornado is spotted, either visually or by Doppler radar, a tornado warning is issued by the local National Weather Service office. In some communities, sirens are sounded to alert people of the approaching storm. Radio and television stations interrupt regular programming to broadcast the warning. Is right now showing up on the Storm Sentinel, an active tornado warning up here in Roosevelt County, Montana, but a line of thunderstorms here, the strongest of which are down in the southwest corner. Taking you down a little closer with the Storm Sentinel, here is the strongest storm right over Ma at this particular hour as we get in just a little bit closer where we see the darker red colors. That's likely where we have the largest hail and that's tracking just to the north and west of you folks in Mott. And that means you'll want to get those cars inside from the garage. And remember, now you want to seek shelter in that interior room away from windows. And also, these strong storms can, with very little warning, produce tornadoes. And we do have that tornado watch in effect as it continues its movement about 30 miles per hour to the north and east, northern Grant County, including you folks out by Lake Chida, and also on in toward the Glen Olin and Hebron areas. That's where the line of activity is heading. We'll stay on top of that for you tonight. Here is a look at the radar now. Although not completely effective, this warning system is apparently saving many lives. Despite the large increase in the population in the tornado belt in the past 30 years, tornado-related deaths have actually shown a decrease. Beyond this mistakenly held belief that tornadoes only occur in Tornado Alley, there are many misperceptions about these storms. Some classic tornado myths include Tornadoes are always visible from a great distance? This is false. Tornadoes can be hidden within the heavy rain shafts within a thunderstorm. Another is tornadoes cause houses to explode from extreme changes in air pressure. False. Homes are damaged or destroyed by strong winds, not changes in air pressure. Some people have traditionally thought that by opening the windows in your house before a tornado hits, you can balance the pressure inside and outside your home so a tornado will not do as much damage or any damage at all. This of course is false as well. The force of a tornado can rip through a structure whether the windows are open or not. One shouldn't open the windows when a tornado threatens. This could actually make the situation worse and potentially put yourself in more danger by not taking shelter immediately. Another myth is that the best place to be during a tornado is generally in the southwest corner of the lowest floor in your home. This is also false. This used to be a safety rule based on the idea that debris would usually not be deposited there, but has now been rethought. 
The current best advice is to move to a protected interior room on the lowest floor of the building, as far possible from exterior walls and windows. One myth people have thought true is that tornadoes cannot cross water. This is definitely false, because a water spout is a type of tornado that forms on water. Tornadoes can also form on land and cross bodies of water, such as rivers or lakes. More violent tornadoes can also travel up and down hillsides. Therefore, a belief that your location is protected by a river or ridge could prove to be a dangerously invalid one. When a tornado warning has been issued, you may have very little time to prepare, so how you respond now is critical. Make sure to obey the advisories from the National Weather Service promptly. Here are some severe weather tips to follow when a warning is issued. If you live in a frame home, carefully evaluate the situation before bringing in outdoor items. This may put your life in danger if the storm is quickly approaching. Make sure that you have a portable radio for information. Seek shelter in the lowest level of your home, like a basement or storm cellar. If there is no basement, go to an inner hallway in a smaller inner room or a closet. Keep away from all windows. You can also cushion yourself with a mattress, but do not use one to cover yourself. Do cover your head and eyes with a blanket or jacket to help protect against flying debris and broken glass. Don't waste time moving mattresses around. Keep your pet on a leash or in a carrier. Multiple tornadoes can emerge from the same storm. And always, do not go out until officials say that it is safe. If you live in a mobile home, leave your mobile home immediately and take shelter elsewhere. If you are outside, try to get inside and seek out a small protected space with no windows. Avoid large span roof areas such as school gymnasiums, arenas, or shopping malls. If you cannot get inside, crouch for protection beside a strong structure or lie flat in a ditch or low-lying area and cover your head and neck with your arms and or a piece of cloth. If you are in a car, Ideally, you should avoid driving when tornadoes or other kinds of dangerous weather threaten, as a vehicle is a very unsafe place to be. If, however, this is not possible, stay as calm as possible and assess the situation. Your best option might be to get out of the car and lie flat in a ditch or other low-lying area that is of sufficient depth to provide protection from the wind. If you do so, Beware of water runoff from heavy rain that could pose a hazard. Get as far away as, from the vehicle as possible and shield your head from flying debris, or if possible, take shelter immediately in a nearby building. Do not leave a building to attempt to escape a tornado. Tornadoes can and often do change direction rapidly. Though a tornado may look like it's moving in a certain direction, it may fool you by looking like it's stationary, which actually means that it is moving in the general direction toward you. If you are a storm spotter, always keep an adequate distance between you and the storm. Keep in mind your relative position to the storm and always have an escape route. And that means you'll want to get those cars inside from the garage. And remember, now you want to seek shelter in that interior room away from windows. And also, these strong storms can, with very little warning, produce tornadoes. And we do have that tornado warning. Oh, good. Oh my God. You got more? All the way down now. After a tornado hits, do your best to not panic. Stay calm and use your head. Panic can cause irrational decisions which may put you in danger. Stay away from downed power lines. If you see some, be sure to report them to your utility company. Stay away from damaged buildings until inspectors have given you the green light. Help injured or trapped persons by administering first aid and immediately call 911 if there are life-threatening injuries.
By remembering these tips, you will not only stay safe, but you will also assist your local community emergency managers after a disaster hits. We at KXMB CBS 12 strive to keep the public safe by monitoring atmospheric conditions, which may cause severe thunderstorms and tornadoes to form. If these events occur, meteorologists stay to monitor the situation, pass along information from the National Weather Service, and give the public a detailed look of where the storm is, where it is going, how bad it could potentially be, and what people should do if they are in the path of this storm. KXMB CBS 12 is so committed to keeping you safe, we cut into programming to warn you of possible dangers that could affect you or your family. With our state-of-the-art storm sentinel and live computers, we are able to show you what is happening right up to the second. When protecting the life of you and your family, every second counts. When we're not cutting into programming, we have a crawl system that shows all the information you need to know about severe weather, as well as our exclusive system of small displays in the bottom left corner of the screen to show you critical information when you need it. With a team of meteorologists, the Dakota Storm Team helps you stay safe whenever severe weather strikes with coverage you can count on. KXMB CBS 12, North Dakota's best news and weather. Thank you for watching Tornadoes. I'm Mark Tucson. From all of us at KXMB CBS 12, stay safe, stay informed. Keep it tuned to KXMB CBS 12 for all your news, weather, and sports information. Good night. you like to be an orange don't be sitting here hey slow don't knock me over don't hey i'm gonna hey, you hey you gec 329 slow down aren't you gonna slow down get it orange <laughs> yeah hey you in the buick slow down Whoa. hey the orange says slow down that we at Millennium Poly Cars are in the middle of a great school's already started sale. We have an obligation to sell you the cheapest car in town so you are guaranteed to get great deal. This is brand new to the lot. Low mileage and fantastic for only $8,000. On sale this week for $7,500. With 0.9 financing and $0 down with the food credit, you're guaranteed a great deal. So stop down and see our working cars in our super selection. We're on Columbia, Grant Forks. Every spring, we witness the magic of migration. This year, pay close attention to the return of the striped, orange-breasted traffic cone. Hey, don't laugh. Yeah, it's me, talking orange. Yeah, the cones are coming back. And that means just one thing, slow down. This year, there's a big flock coming through to make our roads better than ever. So pay attention to the cones. Hey, the orange says, slow down. <laughs>